To thee we come, O Lord our God, before thy altar Father, thou knowest best our yearning hearts, this supplication answer, lift up from blood. Having confessed our sins to God and asking for his forgiveness, let us now at this time recite the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault, in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done or failed to do. I ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. My dear brothers and sisters, for your penance for the next three nights, to remember saying your evening prayers of the Our Father, Hail Mary, and Glory Be, but also to take one of the three readings to reread and to reflect upon the importance of the truth as found in the writings of the New Testament. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Therefore, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. This is, this is the commandment we have from him. Whoever loves God must also love his brother. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and shall be. World without end. Amen. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Please be 
be seated. Let us pray. Almighty Father, your Son taught us to love you above all in our neighbors as ourselves. Help us to follow his example that our love for you may be evident in the caring of our brothers and sisters. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful Father, as we observe the 11th anniversary of the passing of our brother in blessed memory, Robert Jackanowski, into his eternal rest, we ask you for your grace and blessing. Accept him into your eternal kingdom and bring unto us the consolation of always trusting in your care. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Cheryl, will you please proclaim the word today? First reading is a reading from the book of Exodus. Thus says the Lord, you shall not molest or oppress an alien, for you were once aliens yourselves in the land of Egypt. You shall not wrong any widow or orphan. If you ever wrong them and they cry out to me, I will surely hear their cry. My wrath will flare up and I will kill you with the sword. Then your own wives will be widows and your children orphans. If you lend money to one of your poor neighbors among my people, you shall not act like an extortioner toward him by demanding interest from him. If you take your neighbor's cloak as a pledge, you shall return it to him before sunset, for this cloak of his is the only covering he has for his body. What else has he to sleep in? If he cries out to me, I will hear him for I am compassionate. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm, I love you, Lord, my strength. I love you, Lord, my strength. I love you, O Lord, my strength. O Lord, my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. I love you, Lord, my strength. My God, my rock of refuge, my shield, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Praised be the Lord, I exclaim, and I am safe from my enemies. I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord lives and blessed be my rock. Extolled be God my Savior. You who gave great victories to your king and showed kindness to your anointed. I love you, Lord, my strength. The second reading is a reading from the first letter of St. Paul the Apostle to the Philosians. Brothers and sisters, you know what sort of people we, we were among you for your sake, and you became imitators of us and of the Lord, receiving the word in great affliction with joy from the Holy Spirit, so that you became a model for all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia, for from you the word of the Lord has sounded forth, not only in Macedonia and in Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has gone forth, so that we have no need to say anything. For they themselves openly declare about us what sort of reception we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to await his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the coming wrath. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Sheriff. Alleluia, alleluia. 
No one has ever seen God. Yet if we love one another, God remains in us, and his love is brought to perfection in us. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory be to you, O Lord. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they, they came together and one of them, a scholar of the law, tested him by asking, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. The Gospel of the Lord. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? These words are taken from today's Holy Gospel. According to St. Matthew, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. To you, my dear brothers in Christ Jesus, there are a couple of times in Holy Scripture in which Jesus is called upon to confirm his faith. Today we read about the Pharisees and the Sadducees. What was the difference between the Sadducees and the Pharisees? Well, to kind of put it in simple terms, the Pharisees were Orthodox Jews. The Sadducees were also followers of the Law of Moses, but they became Hellenistic or one of the greatest powers of that era, era uh, the Greek civilization that had a profound um, impact upon all of Jude Judaism. We read that in the Torah, the law given to, to Moses, according to our faith on Mount Sinai, contains 613 commandments. The majority of them begin with the words, Thou shalt not, where 245 of the 613 start with the words, Thou shalt. And so, as an Orthodox Jew, you try to do your very best to live by those 613 decrees or commandments. In the Catholic faith, we have what is known as the two commandments of love. Thou shalt love the Lord your God. Thou shalt love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus says the importance of all this depends upon all 116 of the commandments given by God, which those two commandments are contained within the Torah. 
You know, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the elders and the chief priests, were always trying to give it to Jesus. Last week we read about where they tested Jesus and they said, Teacher, we know you're righteous, we know you do the right thing. Is it lawful to pay tax unto Caesar? Well, Jesus, through the wisdom and through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, answered that question simply by saying, whose image is on the coin? He said, Caesar's. Jesus said, therefore, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God belongs to God. And so we talked last week about the discernment of knowing what is temporary and what is eternal. And for us, the difference between physical and spiritual is that in the physical realm, we will live for just a period of time, but yet when it comes to eternal life, it is according to this faith that we are brought into the faith of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This coming week, there are two very important feast days. One, which will be celebrated on Wednesday, is All Saints. It is a holy day of obligation in which the church calls upon all people to gather in the church and to remember the saints of God. I hope that with some of the research that I have done and placed in the bulletin that you have a better idea of who the saints and the martyrs of God were. We start from the very beginning of remembering the martyrs, the apostles of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We remember the early church fathers, the men and the women, and as I say to Wayne, all martyrs are saints, but all saints are not necessarily martyrs. And in the study of the saints and the martyrs of the church of which we come from tradition, even though our church started in 1897, we go all the way back to the early years. Those whose faith was, was strong, who would rather offer their own lives and sacrifice as a martyr than to deny their faith. And so we come from a very, very rich tradition in which we can owe our thoughts and our prayers and the very act of salvation to all the saints. One of the things that I had placed in a reflection on all saints is the Apostles' Creed. We say the Nicene Creed every Sunday and during the week for holy days and solemnities. But the Apostles' Creed is only said a few times. The first time is when we are brought as a child, an infant, usually, into the church to be baptized. We start in the vestibule of the church, and upon entering the church for the first time, the infant who is to be baptized is, along with the godparents and the family, that there is a recitation of the Apostles' Creed speaking on behalf of that child. It is believed that the Apostles' Creed finds its beginning by the belief of the early Apostles. That's why we call it the Apostles' Creed. The purpose of all saints is to remember the men and women who have given of themselves 
in which we recite in the Apostles' Creed, I believe in the communion of saints. The following day on Thursday is a commemoration of all souls. It is the remembrance of the faithful departed. Both all saints and all souls are celebrated in not only the Western Rite, the Eastern Rite of the Christian Church, but among many Protestant denominations, including the Anglican, the Lutheran, and the Methodist. You know, this past year, and as the year is coming to the close, the Eastern Diocese Mission and Evangelism, of which I am the chaplain, has dedicated the year to a greater understanding of the Confession of Faith of Bishop Hogan. What a wise man ahead of his time. And in his Confession of Faith, outlines not only our belief in God, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, which forms the Holy Trinity, but he goes on to speak about our responsibilities of not only loving God, but also loving all men. And toward the end of the Confession of Faith, he writes in reference to the All Saints and to all souls, and about what awaits each and every single one of us who are baptized into the faith. He says, I believe in the ultimate justice of God, in a future life beyond the grave, which will be a continuation of this temporal life, and which, as to its condition and degree of perfection and happiness, is dependent on our present life, but above all on the state of our soul in the final hour before death. You know, one of the things that Martin Luther began to rebel against the Roman Catholic Church was the whole concept of indulgences. Ah, your poor grandmother. You know, she is basically in the fires of hell. But if you give X amount of dollars, we'll take X amount of years, so she won't have to go through all that suffering. We do not, in the Polish National Catholic Church, believe in indulgences. And we do not hold to the same concept in the Roman Catholic Church of purgatory and eternal damnation. How brilliant Bishop Holder would say, I believe in a future life, a continuation of the temporal life as to its degree of perfection. We are all given a free will by which in our lifetime and the years that we are given to try to be drawn closer to understanding the teachings of Jesus Christ and how it pertains to each and every single one of us. Bishop Hudder said at the hour of our death, it will be dependent upon our next life, life will be. He does not say hell. He does not say purgatory. He does not even say heaven. That is found within Holy Scripture. I am very fortunate that as the chaplain of the Eastern Diocese of Mission and Evangelism, that I will give the presentation in December, which will be more or less a a wrap-up of everything that had been contained. And so it will be upon this final statement of Bishop Hudder that I will put together my power presentation. Bishop Hudder stated, I believe in immortality, in everlasting happiness, in eternity, in union with God of all people, races, and ages, because I believe in the divine power of love, mercy, and justice, and for nothing else do I yearn, but that it may be to me according to my faith.
And so, my dear brothers and sisters, it is important as Christians to remember the saints and to commemorate our faithful departed. May God give us the wisdom and the grace to every single day grow closer unto him. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, as we offer today's intentions, our main intention is for peace. What is happening in the Middle East is horrendous. And when I look at the pictures on TV or on my computer, my heart goes out to children. It's a very evil thing that Hamas has done to the Israelis. And I ask that you pray for peace and you ask for a peaceful resolution. That there is a need. And now I'm going to talk a little bit for a moment on the social gospel. Bishop Holder believed in the rights of all people. And unfortunately, like the wheat and the tares, Hamas has embedded itself among the Palestinians who are suffering. And so, whether it be an Israeli child or a Palestinian child, or a Ukrainian child, we must remember and offer our prayers, and I believe in the power of prayer, that we offer prayer for the leaders of the world to come together and to find a peaceful resolution. May God hear our prayers this day as we pray for peace. May God bless what is taking place in the Middle East as well as Ukraine. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Please be seated. If anyone says, I love God, and hates his brother, he is a liar. For whoever does not love a brother whom he has not seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. My dear brothers and sisters, our intentions for today are met with the response Hear our prayer, O Lord. Hear our prayer, O Lord. We pray this day for the sick, the suffering, and the dying, for the hungry and the homeless. We pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer, O Lord. 
We pray this day for all abused and neglected children in our world, those children who are suffering in the Middle East, in Ukraine, and other parts of the, Lord, of the world. We ask that the dear Lord, the Prince of Peace, would enter the minds and hearts of our leaders and bring about a lasting peace. We pray to the Lord. We pray this day for all those who serve in our armed forces, both here and abroad, and that God would protect all of them. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the Polish National Catholic Church, its bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for the holy name of Jesus, that God would continue to bless and strengthen our church. We pray to the Lord. Almighty and eternal Father, receive the petitions that we offer to you in prayer and ask that you would hear our prayer. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ said, ask and you shall receive. And so therefore we give thanks unto you, God, our Heavenly Father. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness. We have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, may become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this wine and water, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands may become for us our spiritual drink. O oh Lord God, we ask that you receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you this day with humble and contrite hearts. Come, Holy Spirit, and bless the sacrifice which we have prepared for the glory of your most holy name. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from all my sins. Receive this offering, most holy Trinity, which we make in the memory of the passion, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ. And in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, may they then, whose memories we honor here on earth, intercede for us in heaven. Through the same Christ our Lord, we pray this day. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God, our Heavenly Father. Amen. Let us pray. God our Father, we place our gifts before you in sacrifice. Teach us to love as you love and to forgive others as you forgive us. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray, Almighty Father. Accept these gifts we offer to you in faith and trust. May this offering unite us with your son's offering on the cross and bring unto us and to our brother, Robert Jokonowski, eternal life. We ask all of this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. 
which is found on page 88 of our Mass Service booklets. It should be noted that the canon of the Dutch Old Catholic Church was the canon that was recited when Father Francis Holder was consecrated as a bishop. Blessed are you, Lord of all majesty and King of eternal glory, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. In him your word was made flesh, in him the fullness of your grace was revealed in splendor. In all things he fulfilled your will and glorified your name. He proclaimed your kingdom to us. He broke the power of darkness over us. He took our guilt upon himself. He reconciled us to you and unlocked the new paradise for us. As the way, the truth, and the life, he has revealed your love to us. He humbled himself and became obedient, even to death on the cross, and by rising restored our life. On the night in which he was betrayed to undergo that suffering, which he himself had chosen, he took bread into his hands, and lifting his eyes to you, his heavenly Father, he gave thanks. He blessed the bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body which is given for you. When supper had ended, he took the cup and gave thanks to you. He blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Your death, Lord Jesus, we proclaim. Your resurrection we celebrate. Your return in glory we await. Therefore, Father, we remember his saving passion, his glorious resurrection, and his exaltation at your right hand. We await his coming in the fullness of majesty. We here set forth the sign of our faith in him, who offered you the perfect sacrifice and gained for us eternal salvation. Send your Holy Spirit, the giver of life and holiness, upon us and upon these gifts, the bread and wine of eternal life. Holy Spirit, come to us, fill us with your gift of grace. 
Take these gifts from our hands, Lord God, as an acceptable sacrifice for which we offer ourselves to you, so that the bread which we break and the cup which we bless may be a sharing in the body and blood of your Son. May all who remain and receive these gifts from your heavenly altar always remain united with you, together with all your saints and chosen ones, with the blessed and glorious Virgin Mary, the mother of our Lord, and with all the saints for whom whom memory memories we keep this day, along with your prophets and apostles, along with your martyrs and confessors, and all who stand about your throne in praise and prayer. Bless your church throughout the world, grant it unity and peace. Renew the earth according to your promise. Remember all peoples, and grant that all nations may give you thanks, worshiping and praising your holy name. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Through him, with him, in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father. Forever and ever. Amen. Please turn to page 95, where we will continue Holy Mass. Let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free, free from sin and secure. Protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Please be seated. The cup of blessing which we bless is a denot of participation in the blood of Christ. The bread which we break. Is it to not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread. We who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. May the union of divinity and humanity in Jesus Christ bring us sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you, do not look at our sins but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. And now let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be unto all of you. And now, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world and have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world and have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world and have mercy on us. This morning, let us all pray together the first communion prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teachings and never let me be parted from you. We will take the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not going to receive you, but I will say the word. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen.
Blessed are you who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for you shall be filled. Receive the body and the blood of Christ. Amen. Receive the body and the blood of Christ. Amen. Receive the body and the blood of Christ. Receive the body and the blood of Christ. Receive the body and the blood of Christ. She may tell me correct for this to say. Receive the body and the blood of Christ. Receive the body and the blood of Christ. O sacred banquet memorial of the Last Supper, in which our Savior gives himself to be food for mankind, and in the deep of truth he unites himself with them. Here our prayers have been sent this day to your divine majesty, that as many of us shall receive from the sacred altar. The body and blood of your Son may be filled with every blessing and grace. Through the same Christ our Lord, we pray this day. Amen. Possess with pure hearts that which we have taken as food. And may the gifts we have received this day bring us healing and strength now and forever. Amen.
in this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as expiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also must love one another. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord our God, you joined us to the company of the chosen and have fed us with the bread of life. May we who have shared at your altar share our love with each other in the name of Christ, our Savior. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit and our one God forever and ever. Let us pray, merciful God, through this Holy Eucharist, we are united with our Lord Jesus, who rose from the dead. May our brother Robert Jakonowski, whose anniversary of death we honor this day, be joined with you in the new Jerusalem. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit and art one God, forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. May the peace and blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, descend upon you, my brothers and sisters. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be felt by all of you, now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace and serve your Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please be seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And for the repose of the soul of our late departed brother and blessed memory, Robert Jakonowski, as well as all our faithful departed, eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. May they all rest in peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.